Okay, by the way, I already clicked the recording. Allow TIS and allow teacher Jermaine to record today's session. By the way, is this basic three already? Or many kids can still join in this class? Let me check. I was supposed to give you a test before the discussion today, but I only have seven of you. So while waiting for your other classmates, let's have a short review. Then after a while, I'll give you the test and let's discuss the test after one. Okay, this time. Okay, Rayhan is already here. I will be sharing my screen again. Okay, not again, but I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes, miss. Yes, teacher. So, um, what will be the coverage of your test today will be on pages. I guess I'll have to start with page 14. Okay, until the later, oh, no. There are other things that are also included in here. Okay. If someone asks you, how do you feel today? If someone asks you, how do you feel today? How are you going to respond to that question? Yeah. Good evening, miss. Sorry, I'm late to join the Zoom, miss. Okay, how are you going to respond? Okay, if somebody asks you, if how are you feeling today? What is I... the correct word? Yes. Well, okay, so you say I feel well or I feel great, and we should take note that when referring to health, we use okay, use well rather than good. Okay, Catherine, please read the sentences inside the box. No, you may use good with well when you are not. Referring to health. Example, I feel good about my de decision to learn Spanish. Okay, when you are going to use good, if you talk, if you refer um, about your emotions or to something, not referring to health. Okay, so you are going to take note of that one. And also, we also have to take note about the proper use of ad adjectives in a sentence. What is an adjective class? What do we mean by adjective? It is. What are adjectives? Adjectives are. The word describing them. Okay. Very good, Catherine. Adjectives are describing words. Okay. Describing words, it describes a noun. 
By the way, what is a noun, class? If you can still recall, what is a noun? What do we mean by a noun? In our previous discussion, a noun refers to a name of a name of a person, a place, an animal, or a thing. Is teacher right? Am I right? Yes, teacher. Okay. Who can repeat that one? Who can repeat that one? What is a noun? When we say nouns, these are all? The okay, nouns are names. Take note, everybody, that nouns are names. While adjectives describe the noun or describing word. Okay, we have the word more. When are we going to use more? If we describe one, two, or three. More. When are we going to use more? If we are describing one, two, or three. Or more than three? Two. Okay. If we are comparing, we're describing two. If we, okay, we say more beautiful, more virtuous, more responsible. Okay, comparing two persons. How about most? How about the word most? When are we going to use most? Three. Or more. Yes, very good. Describing three or more. So this time we will say most beautiful of all, most responsible of all. Okay, more than three. I have also discussed to you the use of demonstrative pronouns. This, that, this, and those. Okay, but this one, this topic is not included. Um, This is not included with our test today. My test is very simple. It's only an eight-item test. Okay? I have also discussed about prepositions. And what are prepositions? Those are words that show the position of a certain object. If we say, uh, uh, what are some prepositions? Again, can you recall what are some prepositions that you know? Uh, okay, for example, uh, for example, I have this notebook in here. I have this ball pen in here. Okay, I'm going to put the ball pen here. Where is the ball pen now? Where's the pen? Under. Very under. good. It is under. How about I, I'll put it here? Beside. Yes, very good, Catherine. How about I put it here? On. Okay, it is on the notebook. Or we can also say that it is above the notebook. So those are examples of preposition. Okay, do not forget about it. Okay, if we are using time or if we are indicating the time of an occurrence, what are we going to use? So we use on or in? On. Yes, we, we are going to use on. Okay, Catherine, please read the two examples we have here. Uh, for a while. Okay, that way. Examples. He was born on December 23. We will arrive on the 4th. Okay, very good. So, we will not say he was born in December 23. That's wrong. Because the correct way of saying it is that he was born on December 23, okay? On December 23. Another example. We will arrive on the fort, okay? On the fort. We, we don't say in the fort, but we say on. Okay, if we indicate time of an occurrence, we are going to use on. Take note of this one, okay? We are going to use on. 
Okay, rule number three, rule number three, we have ops of should never be used in a place of have, okay? The word of, okay, it should never be used in the place of have, okay? You say, I should have done it, that's correct. But if you say, I should, I should have done it, okay? Instead of using, instead of using of, Instead of using of, you are going to use have. Take note, kids. Instead of using of, you are going to use have. So, I should have done it. Not, I should have of it. I should of done it. So that's wrong. Okay, next. We have rule number four, everybody. We have rule number four. Okay. How about the other kids? Maybe they would like to open their cameras, right? So I have 14 of you today. Okay, so we have rule number four. Josephine, please read. Hello. Okay, if not Josephine, maybe Ressa would like to read. Okay, they're not okay, they're not yet ready. Shit yeah. Okay. Uh Ressa, are you ready now, Ressa? Okay, Miss. B2. Ressa. Between refer to between refer to two. <laughs> Between refer to two. Come again, Ressa. Okay. Between refer. Hello. Can you still hear, teacher? Hello. Can you still hear me? Yes, teacher. I can hear you. Thank you, Catherine. So between, how about in the trust and honey? Can you hear, teacher? Yes, yes, miss. Okay. I'll continue. Between refers to two, and among is used for three or more. Example, divide the candy between the two of you. Okay, you are just talking about two, so you use between. But if you say three or more, you are going to use the word among. I hope you can still recall that one. That was our last activity um, during our last meeting. Okay. Divide the candy among the three of you. Okay. Okay. How about if I'll if I'll say um how about if I say mother um mother divides the the bread among between her five children. Mother divides the bread among or between her five children. What should we use? Is it among or among. between? Okay, among. why among? Okay, why are we going to use among? Well, maybe because it's because five, five children. Yeah, because um, the bread will be divided among the five. Okay, three or more, we are going to use among. Okay, how about uh, the given example is the, um, the books are given between among the two kids. The books are given between among the two kids. Okay, what do you think are we going to use? Is it among or between? Between. Yes. Why between now? Because it's two kids. Okay. Two kids. Just say we use between. Okay. We have rule number five. When we say into. <coughs> okay. You have into. That means or it implies entra entrance. Okay. Meaning um, you go into the house. Okay. You go. Uh, what do you call that one? Um, you're going 
um, you are um, going into the house. If you go inside, you use, you use into. While in, it does not imply entrance. Example, Sophia walked into the house. Meaning, Sophia is going to going inside the house. Okay. So, Sophia was waiting in the house. So, where is Sophia? In the house. So, if you are going to use in, does, that does not show entrance. Okay? Meaning, in, you are already, you are inside, in, inside the house. Oh, okay. I think we have stopped with, um, we have stopped with this one, but let's finish this before I give you the test, okay? Let's read rule number six, okay? And the, can I have you for rule number six in the? Chemist, rule six, the word like when used to show comparison is a preposition, meaning that it should be followed by an object of the preposition, but not by a subject and verb. Use the connectors or also called conjunction, as or as if when following a comparison with the subject and verb. Okay. Um, I would also like to ask Tristan to read rule number six. Thank you, Enda. Okay. Rule six. The word like, when, the word like when used to show comparison it's a preposition, meaning that it should be followed by an object of the prepositions, but not by a subject and verb. Use the connector or also called conjunctions as or as if when following a comparison with a subject and verb. Okay, thank you. Um, let us discuss first some of the important keywords in this, um, in this rule. Let us go back to subject. Everybody, what do we call or what is a subject in a sentence? We have discussed it all over again. What is a subject? Okay, if we, if we talk about that one in a sentence, what is a subject? Usually, it is the noun in the sentence. So, what is a subject? The subject is... Mm. Yes? Subject is indicate person. Sometimes, subject indicates the thing. Yeah. Who is want to do a verb or what? Okay, so... Um, that's good, Mark. Thank you for your answer. Okay, Mark is right that usually subjects are persons. There are also instances that subjects are things or animals because you know subject or subjects are, um, it is what the sentence is all about. Mm. What the sentence is talking about, that's what you call the subject in, this, in the sentence. For example, I will say, Mark is an intelligent boy. Mark is an intelligent boy. The subject is Mark because I am talking about Mark. While intelligent boy is a predicate. And what is a predicate? It talks or it tells about the subject. Okay? I will be putting it in the chat box. Where is that one? So we have the subject, we also have the predicate in the sentence. Again, okay, subject, it is what the sentence is all about. Well, the predicate, okay, well, the predicate, yes, Mark, what do, what do you want to say about object? You want to say about object? Uh, so the subject here is doing predicate with the object. The predicate is an object. The, the object is predicate. No, Mark. The predicate tells something about the subject. We have many types of object. It can be an object of the preposition. 
when you say um mark went into the house okay into the house mark is the subject the object of the preposition uh, the prepositional phrase is into the house the object of the preposition is house the verb in the sentence is went Yes, Mark. Okay, because when we talk about the object in the sentence, it can be a person or a thing to which a specified action or feeling is directed. Okay, there is an attached verb um, in that sentence that is the object, object of the preposition. I will be discussing that one later. That's why, Mark, I am still talking about the subject and the predicate. Okay? okay. Let me have this example. Everybody, please check the chat box. Can you see my... Okay. Can you see my sentence in the chat box? In the... Could you please... Could you please read the sentence in the... Okay, miss. Tristan is reading a book in the library. Okay. Tristan, could you please read it again? Okay, Tristan is reading a book in the library. Okay, what is the subject in the sentence? Everybody look in the chat box. What is the subject in the sentence? Tristan. Okay, what is the subject in the sentence? The subject is Tristan. Okay, how do we call reading? Okay, reading. let's have this one. How about reading a book in the library? Reading a book it's a description. A time place. A very time good. Place. Okay, very good, Catherine. This is the predicate in the sentence. Reading a book in the library talks about what Tristan is doing. Okay. How about if we all we just have the word reading? What is that? Okay. How is it? Yeah, okay. how is it used in the sentence? It is a verb. Very good in the okay, reading. Okay, while Mark is also correct, um, reading is a predicate. It is what you call that one? It's a, it is a simple predicate. But um, what kind of predicate it is? It is a verb, right? And that is right. Reading is a verb. Okay. We have the word in the library. Okay, it start with the um, it start with the word in. Okay, so you say in the library. It is an um, uh, it is a prepositional phrase. Where is Tristan reading? In the library. This time, the word reading here, the verb one, the verb is reading, right? Library now is the object of the preposition. Okay, object again. Um, it's a verb or an act, uh, a verb, an action. Um, no, not a verb or an action. It is a word where the verb is being directed to. Okay, that's why we call this one as the object in the sentence. Okay, I'll give another sentence. Okay. Oh, again, again. Um. Okay. Uh, we have. I've I've changed my sentence. Everybody, I've changed it. Katrina, maybe you would like to read the the new one, the new sentence, Katrina. Katrina. What, Miss? 
Could you please read the sentence? I'll be putting it again. Mother, mother bakes pancake for the girls. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> okay. So you have your mother bake pancake for the girls. Um, I don't know why. Okay. So Mark, Mark said here. Okay. Mark said here. Okay. Bakes. It is a verb. That's correct. Okay, Gree said mother, that is the subject. Okay, that's correct. So, mother is baking what? Mother is baking pancake. Who is the receiver of the action? Okay, since mother is baking, the receiver of the action are the girls. Baking what? Baking pancake. For the girls. Description. For the girls, description for the girls, it is um, a prepositional phrase because it starts um, it starts with the word for. Okay. So take note about the subject and the verb in a sentence. So we have here examples. Okay, you look so much like your is mother. Your name? Yes. So for the girls is predicate. For the girls. Oh, where is that one? Predicate mark is bakes pancake for the girls. This is the complete predicate. Bakes pancake for the girls. Mother subject. Bake spawn cake for the girls, complete predicate. The simple predicate or the verb in the sentence is bake. Right? Yes. Mark? Okay. Is it Mark? Yes. Okay, now? Okay, uh, I, I mean for the girls is what category? Prepositional frame. Proposition? Yeah. Why did you say, or why did you say description? Oh, or you're asking for the description of that one. What does it mean in that sentence? Ah, uh, the, the sentence doesn't look, look at that. It's for the girls. It yes. is reading the sentence. Yes, Mark. Okay. It's for the, it's for the girls. Yes. Mark, yes, Mark. So, so, for the girls, actually what? For the girls? Yes. It is the receiver of the action, which the action is, the verb. It is the receiver of the action. The girls are the receiver of the action. Okay. Yes. Because mother is baking for whom? For the girls. Okay, for the girls. Okay, let us continue with rule number six, okay? You also have here conjunction. What do we mean by conjunction? It's conjunction, um, it, or conjunction is, um, it is, it is a part, what you call one? It is a part of speech. Same with nouns, verbs, adverbs, ad adjectives, um, conjunctions. It is a part of speech. Um, that is called connectors. Okay, connecting a group of objects or a third or a um a give a word to another word. Okay, examples of connectors. So you are going to use as, or you are going to use. As if. But there are many examples of conjunction. Okay? There are many examples 
of conjunction. Okay. For is an example of it. We have and we have we also have um, we also have or and nor. Can you still remember about fun boy? Oh, uh, yeah, it's to remember the uh, com com for compound sentence. Yeah, for compound sentence because uh, compound sentence, um, you you are going to uh, to join together two um independent clauses. Okay. What does fun boy stand for? What does fun boy stand for? It stands for F for stands for and uh, nor Nicholas continue nor nor how about B? Wait, okay. But but or, How about O? Yes. But or Why? How about why? Yet. And letter S is for? Letter S is for? So. So. Okay. Could you please repeat it, Nicolas? What does fun boy stand for? We have. What was Y again? What is Y? Yet. Yet. Y E T. Yet. Okay. F for four. A for N. N for nor. B for but, O for or, Y for, what is it again? Yes, yes. Y yes. is yet, and S is some. So. Oh, some. Okay. So, <clears throat> if you talk about conjunction, use as connect words. Please remember about fun boys. Okay. It is okay. It is an acronym um, used for you to remember conjunction. Okay, fun boys, everybody. It stands for for and nor, but or yet so. Okay. Maybe Honey would like to repeat what does fun boy stand for? Yes, Miss. Yes, <clears throat> what does fun boy stand for? For and nor but or yet so. Okay, and yet. Yeah. Arga, how about you, Arga? What does fun boy stand for? What, miss? What does fun boy stand for? Uh, yes. Catherine, what does fun boy stand for, Catherine? For and nor but or yet so. Okay, how about Catherine? What does fun boy stand for? For and nor but or yet so. Okay, thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Arga. Okay, so take note about fun boy. So example here. You look so much like your mother. So mother here is the object of the preposition like. Okay. You look as if you are angry. As if is connecting two pairs of subjects and verbs. Okay. 
as if here, as if. Okay, look here, you're used, going to use as or as if. Okay, you look, that's another pair, you and looks. And you, another pair of words here, you are angry. Two pairs of subjects and verbs. Okay, take note about the use of conjunction. Okay, for effective writing, for effective writing, okay, we are going to use concrete rather than vague or bad language. Okay? Okay, here. The weather was of an extreme nature on the West Coast. Okay, when you say extreme nature on the West Coast, that you are not... Um, Directly stating the fact, or you are not being, how do I say that one? You are not um, direct to the point. Okay. What do we mean by nature on the West Coast? Instead, for um, um, concrete one, California had very cold weather last week. Okay. You should be clear in your sentences, so you're going to use concrete details or concrete words i don't understand this one okay yes mark what does mean beg you or concrete what does the what difference it mean what the difference between the two What it looks, mean? Yes. Well, it looks in concrete, they look simple, while figure is more to a bit more complex. Okay. There you have it. You've explained it. Because when we talk about concrete meaning, it is being it's being very uh, okay. simple word. I have uh, simple word, simple word or easy word to understand. Then you think vague word. Okay, what do we mean by vague? Meaning you are not and you are um, not sure. Okay, you are not sure of what you are saying, or you are not uh, the detail that you are saying is unclear. Okay, so it's indefinite. Okay, so much better you are going to use concrete, the simple one, for you to understand it or to understand a sentence. Is it okay if I still use fag you one? Yes. Is it still okay if I use the fag you language? Can you try to give me an example? And let us identify if we can still mm -hmm. understand it. In 100 kilometers, turn right, then you reach the destination at Bahama Island. Yes. What <laughs> makes it unclear, Mark, that actually you are stating a correct direction. You say... 100 kilometers you go straight going to Bahama. That's not being vague. That it's is concrete. concrete. Yeah, it's concrete, Mark, because you are definite. You are um you are sure with your direction. Yeah, right. But if it's if it is thank you sentence, then what um, is, what does this look like? What was it? it how does yeah. it look like? I just made, so la, last time, I just made a co the concrete sentence. What okay. if we try to change it to faggy sentence? Okay. Okay. So, so you are, you are asking, you are asking, um, you're asking the class, how are we going to change it into vague? Where in fact, um, what, what the rule says here is it's, um, encouraging everybody to be concrete on their example. Why are we making things difficult, Mark? 
Well, I just want to know who knows that who knows that Mr. Main is going to say in the exam try to convert the concrete sentence to a fake one. Okay. So could you please drop down your sentence so that we can clearly or I can clearly read it, Mark, in the chat box, please. Okay. Okay, while Mark is writing down his sentence, let us move now to rule number two. Okay, again, if we go back to rule number one, that is, okay, you are going to use concrete knowledge, okay, or concrete uh, clear. You're going to be clear in your sentences than being vague. You are unsure or uncertain. Okay, rule number two, you use active voice whenever possible. Okay. What does active voice mean? It means that the subject is performing the verb. Again, the subject in the sentence is the one that we are talking to in the sentence. So the subject, the one that performs the verb. For example, Barry hit the ball. Okay. Barry hit the ball. If you notice in the active sentence or active voice, the subject comes first. Okay, or the subject comes first, then you have the verb. Okay, Barry, that's the subject. Then what is Barry doing? Barry hit or hit the ball. On the other way around, when you say passive voice, the okay, the ball was hit. Okay. What happened to the ball? It was hit. Okay, just take note, active voice means that the, the subject is the one performing the verb. So, Barry hit the ball. Okay, hit here, right? Hit is the, our hit, um, the word hit is, the word hit is the, um, the verb in the sentence. So, we have here the, sub, the subject, which is Barry. Okay, another one. Rule number three, we are going to avoid overusing there is, there are, it is, it was, and so on. Okay. We have an example here. Um, in that, please read the example. Um, okay. There is a case of meaning. Meaning it is that was reported in the newspaper. There is a case of meningitis that was reported in the newspaper. In in the sen in a sentence, there should be um, no redundancy. Okay? Do not use over and over again the word there is, and we also have that was. Okay, for correction, you can say a case of meningitis was reported in the newspaper. So what does rule number three says? Avoid using there is, there are, it is, it was. Okay, only one in a sentence. Let's finish. Oh, there's still many. Okay. Okay. Um, rule number three, that's still that one. Okay, rule number four. Okay, to avoid confusion, don't use two negative to make a positive one. Okay, so he is not unwilling to help. Okay, you have not. Okay, when you say not, then that means no. So that's negative. When you say unwilling, that's also negative. So the correct one, he is willing to help. He is not unwilling to help. So, you know, just like what Mark is trying to say a while ago, we should not make um, sentences that are difficult to understand. That's the that's the point. It should everything should be simple. Okay. Okay, ten minutes left in the class. I'll still be giving you a test. So probably I'll be 
Okay, rule number five. Use similar grammatical form in several ideas. So this is called parallel construction. Oh, okay. Para parallelism. So teacher will be discussing more of that one next meeting so that we will be able to finish chapter three. Mark, I will be going back to your sentence later on. But allow me first to share again my screen for your test this afternoon. Oh, I'm on my sentence. Do, please do the sentence, then we can do exam. Because I don't just understand it. Okay, I hope you can see my screen now. Do you have my screen now? Yes. Okay, so this is... So this is quiz number four. Okay, this is quiz number four. So please do not forget to put your email, your full name. This is only one to eight, okay? So what you are going to do for a while. Okay, so you are going to read the sentences, everybody. Read the sentences. You just click yes. If it is correctly written, then click no if it is not. Again, click yes if it's correctly written, grammatically correct. Then you click no if it's not. So it's only one to eight. So so after, uh, what do you call that one? After taking the test. Please don't share the link. It can dis It is considered cheating because I need... Mr. Jermaine, to answer the the example, this one, if I'm right. Okay. What make um sharing the screen or sharing the link cheating already? Nervous. Okay. Everybody, the link for the test is already shared at the chat box, everybody. I'm sad. Why, why not answer the, my sentence first? Because okay, everybody, I'll be waiting for your... Okay, I'll be wait. Teacher will be waiting for your responses in the, okay, in the Google form. Okay, then if you are done, if you are done answering, you can leave the meet, okay? If you don't have any question, well, Mark can stay on the meet if you still have any question. Again, your, your, your score for this one will be recorded and it will be added to the grade that I made last night, okay? Because I already submitted to Dr. Hari your, your midterm grade. Take note, your score for tonight will affect your grade um, during the midterm. Okay, so as of now, I, I don't have any response or any responses from the class. I'm just sad, I'm hoping to my sentence.
Okay, I already have one response from the class. This is from, okay, it's from Tristan. You don't have a class after me, right? So please accomplish the test within the given time. I'll be closing this one after 30 minutes after our class. That's quite long, okay? Or maybe after 20 minutes. Mark, are you done? Not yet. Okay. Would you like me to talk about your sentence? Yes, please. Okay. Could you please read your sentence, Mark? Okay. In 200 kilometers, turn right. Then you reach your destination at Bahama Street. Okay. At Bahama Street. Okay. Um, first, first of all, I would like to say that your sentence, there are um, three things that you are going to change in your sentence because it is not correctly written. That point, it is already vague. Why? Because your sentence is not correctly written. Okay, the moment that you said your sentence a while ago, you know, I can I can say that oh it is a concrete one because you are telling your sentence orally. Okay, but the moment that you write it down or you wrote it down here in the chat box, not wrote, typed it down in the chat box. Okay, I can say I can see that there are errors in your sentence that makes it vague, Mark. Okay, please take note that in a sentence, you do not forget about the proper punctuation and the proper use of capitalization. Could you please change your sentence? Mark, your sentence is already vague. So you, shall you use it to make it a concrete one? This is a vague sentence? Vague yes, sentence. because it is grammatically incorrect. Take note, take note of what I've said. Take note of what I've said. Um, take note of what teacher said. Use correct punctuation in your sentence. Use proper capitalization to make it correct. Maybe do you mind correcting it? Maybe you can just send me your answer mark later on. And then teacher. Yes, thank you, Catherine. Okay, I already have four responses here. Okay, good. Let me test first. I already have five now. Okay, and that is here. Oh, what happened? What makes... Do you already know your score, Catherine, in the... Yes, teacher. Okay, for those who are done, you can leave the meet already. Thank you for being with me. I hope to see you on Thursday for our reading class. Thank you, kids. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, teacher. Okay, thank you, because it's already 6 p.m. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye. Hi, Mark. Please drop down a message. Or me, maybe you can message me at my WhatsApp, Mark.
I'm done, Miss. Yes, thank you, Katrina. Okay. If you are not yet done, please continue answering the quiz. Teacher will still be waiting for your responses. I'll be closing the link after it's already 6.02. I'll be closing it by 6.15 to 6.20. Okay? Please continue answering the quiz. Thank you, everybody. I'll see you next time. Mark, I'll be messaging you, Mark. Okay? And then, Miss. Yes, yes, thanks to Arga. Mark, do the quiz. And then, Miss. I said, yeah, thank you. And then, Miss. Thank, thank you, honey, Sundara. Thank you. Bye, Miss. Bye-bye. Thank you, kids. See you next done, time. Miss. Bye -bye. Miss, thank you, Bye-bye. Thank you, kids. Thank you, Julian. Okay, my. Mark, I'll message you, Mark, okay? Okay. Oh, why do you say ultra mega sad? Yeah. Ultra then mega already? Yeah. Mark? Uh, uh. Nicholas, thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. Yeah. I'll wait for your answer. Bye-bye. Bye, Mark. Thank you.